Ancient Egypt Crook and Flail The scepter in ancient Egypt was a sign for the kings, princes and nobles and the evidence of His Highness, the prestige, honor and power. The Crook or Heka and the Flail or Flabellum, Nakaka, are two of the most prominent items in the royal regalia of ancient Egypt. Actual, very fine examples of both survive from ancient Egypt, as do statues and various wall reliefs, paintings and papyrus with representations of these objects. The crook and flail, though different scepters, could ever so often be depicted separately, though usually paired with some other type of scepter, but they were most commonly represented together, held across the chest of the kings. Osiris or other gods identified with them. They were insignias of kingship, and while other deities could proffer them, they never kept them. Both insignias derived from the iconography of Anjeti, who was the local god of the delta town named Jedu. He was represented in human form with two feathers on his head and holding the crook and flail in his hands at a very early date in Egyptian history Anjeti who had a close relationship with kingship from the earliest of times was absorbed into Osiris of Bisiris, who became a national god known simply as Osiris. Osiris, of course, was regarded not only as a god but also as a deified deceased king and consequently his insignia and particularly that of the crook and flail were treated as symbols of royalty. Sacred models of them were kept in Heliopolis. The crook was a cane with a hooked handle sometimes gold-plated and reinforced with blue copper bands. It probably derived from the shepherd's corsair. Its hieroglyphic value was, rule. The earliest example of a crook or hika scepter comes from Abydos and the tomb dot listed as U547, dated to the late Nakatatu period. This scepter, made of limestone, was found fragmented but a complete scepter made of ivory was found in another Abydos grave, the one listed as tomb UJ. This is the largest tomb of Abydos found to date. The earliest representation of a king carrying the crook is a small statue of Ninetcher from the Second Dynasty. The flail was a rod with three attached beaded strands. The strands could vary considerably. Using different types of beads and the lengths between the beads could be broken up into several segments. The flail appears alone on some of the earliest representations of royal ceremonies as shown in the example from the label of King Den in the First Dynasty sitting under a canopy or in some ritual structure, waiting to run the SEG festival. It possibly derived from a shepherd's whip or a fly whisk. However, some scholars prefer to regard it as a lot in a a flail-like instrument used until the present day by shepherds in the Mediterranean region and elsewhere. For collecting laudanum, a gummy substance excreted from the leaves of the cistus plant. According to classical writers, it was used in the preparation of incense and unguents. This suggestion proposed by the late Professor P. E. Newberry who helped in the clearance of Tutankhamun's tomb is plausible, but, as yet, there is no clear evidence that the cystus plant grew in Egypt during pharaonic times, but perhaps it could have been used to harvest other gums. Mysteriously, a flail is sometimes depicted floating above the upraised hand of men and other acyphalic deities. Certain sacred animals carry the flail on their backs. Although the crook and flail were most often represented as emblems of the god Osiris, they were also carried on some ceremonial occasions, besides the coronation, by the reigning pharaoh. Very occasionally, the crook was held by viceroys of Nubia and also by viziers. A painted scene of tribute from Asia in the tomb of Tutankhamun's viceroy of Nubia, U, depicts the king holding both the crook and flail in his left hand and the sign for life in his right, while the viceroy holds a crook, but no flail, in his left hand and a single ostrich plume in his right. 
Only very rarely is the flail shown in the hands of priests or officials and such instances are limited to scenes of royal jubilee festivals. The crook and flail did not die out altogether with the end of the pharaonic period of Egyptian history. At least visually, these objects we carried over into Roman times. I and silhouette. The flail resembles the fly whisk, a stick with three pendant animal pills, but despite their similar appearance, they are not interchangeable.